Guess you won't need my self-introduction. Oh, I spent... To hear it from me, then yes, I am Scar, cruel and twisted maniac. We deserve a meeting free of such disturbances, don't you agree? The girl, she's gonna sway your judgment. So you really care about her? Don't worry. I don't plan to make you hate me just yet. She is safe now. Well, let's just enjoy our time together for the moment. Forget about that irrelevant person, will you? I have a lot to share with you. To begin with, I heard you've lost your memories. <laughs> Indeed, I'll tell you then. Before you knew anything about this world, you were already the center of conflict. You are the unknown variable we've been waiting for. Forces have been fighting for possession over you. From the moment you opened your eyes, everyone you've met, including that girl you care so much about, they all knew how valuable you are. The world is a cruel place. You are a living, breathing person, but you're just a pawn to many. That's why I'm here, because I see you as a dear friend, and I want to tell you the truth. I am so, so sorry for everything you're about to face. But truth hurts sometimes. You could say I'm looking forward to your choice. My goal is simple. I just want to deepen our mutual understanding, nothing more. Come on, observe the surroundings a little more and tell me what you see. As you learn more about this world, your true desires will surface, and our little game will become even more entertaining. And before that, I don't want anyone to disturb my precious alone time with you. That's all. Ah, uh, why do you have to assume we are the culprits? Maybe you should be asking me what actually happened here. I won't tell you everything just yet, that's too boring. As I said, why don't you take a look around and see for yourself? So go ahead. What do you see? didn't think you'd catch on to that. Now, what is the conclusion you've drawn? Ah, how typical. The age-old tale of savage wolves and helpless lambs. Good and evil as clear as day. 
It's a tired story that people cling to in their mundane lives. Oh, how it keeps them in check. But let me ask you this. Do you truly believe the real world can be that simple? Let me give you a couple more tips. The truth is far more complicated than you think. First, who are the players in our tale? An innocent girl, a revered leader, and a flock of simple villagers. Next, what makes up our main plot? False devotion, fleeting kindness, collective deceit, senseless killings, and the one vulnerable soul pushed onto a path of destruction by the masses. Now, Rover, the story is yours to spin. I'm eager to hear your version after you've learned more. The story begins here. Once upon a time, in a peaceful village, lived a flock of carefree lambs. In the day, they toiled for food, and when evening fell, they sought refuge from the looming threat of wolves. Fables. Stories told and retold through the ages. The ancient art of conveying hidden truths through fiction. But they always draw from real life, don't they? The same story gets told by many, and each person brings their own spin, their own focus. Whatever you learn from it is just one of countless different interpretations, like us now, caught in a carefully crafted plotline, a scheme I had no hand in. This village marks the beginning of my story with Jinjo. <laughs> so that magistrate led you here to meet me. <sighs> Such a clever move on her part. One day, a shepherd visited the village. The shepherd brought them promises of abundance and protection. The lambs, drawn in by his words, soon lived in comfort and security. No, nope, quite the opposite. The shepherd's arrival is only the beginning. With a wave of his hand, the shepherd could grant their every wish. His flock obeyed, bowing their heads, pleading for better food and shelter. 
They no longer had to struggle for survival, as their once meager lives were replaced with endless luxury. The flock worshipped their shepherd-turned-god, praising him and holding him in the highest regard. What's wrong? Does my story make you uncomfortable? Imagine you were one of those lambs, facing irresistible temptation and pressure from your peers. Wouldn't you bow down and beg for food from your master? Oh, so we agree already. You are right. But the world we live in falls short of our ideals. The shepherd still reigns, and the lambs have grown complacent. It's up to the two of us to make that ideal world a reality. The lambs reveled in endless bonfire parties, celebrating their new god every night. Except the one little black lamb. As each night passed, it was the only one to notice how its flock was dwindling away. Rover, do you think someone would give you what you want without taking anything from you. Mm. <laughs> I once believed that too. Thought as long as I paid a high enough price, I could get my desired outcome. But true equality is scarce, always has been. The world was never a fair place. Wouldn't you agree? To receive equal retribution, one must give more and more. When every wish comes with a hefty price, people weigh their options carefully. When they can make someone else bear the price, they all rush to make more wishes. They don't consider they too may one day pay for another's selfish desire. Funny, isn't it? Later, the shepherd openly blamed the black lamb for the flock's decline. On the next day, the white lambs welcomed the rising sun as usual, but the black lamb was nowhere to be found. The shepherd introduced an unspoken rule to this village, one that our black lamb violated by telling the truth. Suddenly, the once doting god stopped fulfilling wishes because no more sacrifices were being made. After witnessing the black lamb's actions and hearing from their almighty shepherd, what do you suppose the white lambs did? Ah, those oblivious lambs. Little did they know the most fearsome demon was right under their noses. Well done. You didn't let any detail slip. Now, I wonder, what is your takeaway from this story? Answer me and I'll reveal the truth of what happened. Who was the real culprit behind the diminishing number of lambs? Indeed, the direct culprit was the shepherd. He held all the power, fulfilling wishes at a price. The lambs knew the risks yet succumbed to temptation. Unfortunately, 
In the face of such temptation, they disregarded all the hidden risks, as disaster had yet to befall them. If they were given another chance, I believe they would still choose the same path. Inevitably, they accepted their fate and paid the price when their time came. Now, my second question. What price did the lambs pay for their wishes? Of course, as always, life was the most valuable thing they had to offer. Here's my final question. What happened to the black lamb? Ah, 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 ah. Don't rush, Rover. Take your time. What is the truth you've uncovered? The shepherd was granting wishes by sacrificing the lives of lambs. The flock found out the truth, but chose to be his accomplices, and they willingly offered the black lamb as another sacrifice. <laughs> That's right! Little lambs cowered and huddled in their village, terrified of the relentless wolf packs until a shepherd arrived, bearing the gift of wishes and providing shelter and sustenance. Slowly, the shepherd gained control over the flock, and the lambs lived contented lives. But this is not the end of our story. The shepherd found the solitary black lamb in his flock, and offered to grant any wish it desired. In exchange, he wanted one of its companions as a sacrifice. The black lamb refused, and it was shunned by its flock, left without shelter or sustenance. After the black lamb's exile, more lambs continued to vanish. The shepherd then blamed the black lamb for breaking the rules and withheld his wish-granting power as punishment. From the very beginning, the lambs knew the risk of making wishes. They too could become sacrifices for those of others. But they always believed it wouldn't be them. Meanwhile, some lambs reasoned that since they had already risked being sacrificed for someone else's wish, it was then only fair to pass on that risk for a chance at fulfilling their own desires. And so they continued to play the game. They all knew the consequences, but chose to remain silent. Fearful, yet greedy, they followed the shepherd's orders and made wishes again and again. Until one day, a brave black lamb spoke up, shattering the flock's facade, their illusion of a peaceful and happy life. Shepherd's greedy pursuit, sparking hatred in their hearts. Suddenly, they could no longer ignore the blood and ashes of past sacrifices littering the ground. How do you like my story, Rover? 
What really happened here, I suppose you already have it figured out? The black lamb who rebelled against the rules, and the white lambs who succumbed to their greed. The innocent maiden sacrificed, and the villagers who turned on each other in a ruthless frenzy. They had it coming. All the shepherd had to do was execute the rebel. That's how he kept the flock in check and maintained the status quo. Fun answer, but no. Not even close. I was never the shepherd. Never will be. You and I, we are the black lamb. No one who breaks the rules. <laughs> Interesting, Rover. <laughs> I'm liking you more and more. Well then, let's see if this black lamb is going to end up like you say. Welcome to the realm of endless chaos. Now is your time to think, Rover. What is the right path to take? already shake and shiver blink an eye a flock of lambs comes passing by fleece of white black and red who's the sweetest one ahead watch out my dear your pioneers are lying at your feet. Don't look back. Join them on this right path. Uh-uh-uh. Don't rush. One slip and you'll shatter to pieces. Brutality! <laughs> Can't you see? We are kindred spirits after all. Tell me, do you want to be the rule setting shepherd or the rule breaking black lamb? If a sane person manages to survive in a realm of lunatics, would you call them the last one of reason? Or the soul apostle. Think about it. The shepherd is not the preordained embodiment of truth. Once he is gone for good, the black lad can reclaim the trust of its herd. Then, eventually, there will be none left to be victims or oppressors. shattered Scar's illusion that should have injured him. Oh! 
Should I thank you for showing me mercy? Stay away from him! Didn't you promise to leave me some alone time with Rover? With one condition. I do hope you haven't let that slip from your mind. Don't let your improvisation trouble others. <sighs> Look at you, rushing in to protect your precious, perfect movement. No worries. I know all the do's and don'ts. I don't need you to tell me what to do. Rover, it seems our happy little date must come to an end. But don't forget my sincere reminders. Let me know what you choose. An unexpected gift? An honest and open exchange? Or a highly risky gamble? The choice is yours. I know how smart you are. You won't make a hasty decision. We'll meet again in the not too distant future. They're gone. Should we go after them? Oh, don't worry. I'm okay. Scar's resonance abilities appear to involve teleportation and the manipulation of space. He trapped me in confinement and I could only sense that it wasn't far from here. It took me some time to break that barrier. Sorry, Rover. If only I could have reached you sooner. Brother. Brother. Huh? Why are you here, little one? I've never seen any tacit discord display such vivid emotions. The brother had mentioned. Could it be? Yes, that is a possibility. Since Scar had been here before, let's talk about it later. Rover, can you fill me in on what happened? All the tragedies in Tea Tree Village were linked to that ritual. Making up stories based on real life to support his twisted beliefs? That does sound like something he might do. We cannot take his words for granted. Now, we must locate where the ritual took place and see for ourselves. Two distinct frequencies of tacit discords. I see. I can feel it in the streams. Over there. Follow me. In the south. They are unharmed. Please rest assured, as you anticipated, Scar did not try to kill them. Yes, I stayed out of it like you asked. Is everything all right on your end? Please be sure to stay safe, my lady. So this is the Grand Library. I'm not seeing anyone here. Well... It wouldn't hurt to browse the archives for a bit as I wait for her to show up. Thank you for leading the way, Rover. What a magnificent place to set foot in. Extensive, exhaustive. Oh, how I want to carve the place inside out and blow it all to shreds. You'd seem a bit more surprised. 
I wonder why. <sighs> so you've laid a trap for me. Trap me here! You will not escape. What a shame I can't stay and play with you a bit longer! Till we meet again, dear friends. You're not going anywhere. Take it slow. I will protect. yourself up to be my prey? <laughs> now, it's just the two of us. Still at irrational anger of yours. I just have a friendly reminder for you. Seeing is not always believing. Why are you so sure they told you the truth? Don't jump to conclusions so soon. Why are you so stubborn? Why can't you put some of that trust in me? Or do I have to crush you to make you behave for once? I will protect. Fair and war. Rejuvenating snow. <laughs> Embracing change. I got your back. This is my ground. <laughs> now it's my turn. Target confirmed. 
Unleash the fangs. All is fair in war. I got your back. following you all along, huh? My Elysium only breaks under coordinated attacks from both sides. I can never get rid of all these pesky little helpers around you, can I? So you've joined hands against me with Miss Magistrate here. It does hurt my feelings, you know? Always so, so popular. Are you all right, Rover? Of course he is. How could I ever have the heart to hurt him? Consider my moment of failure a gift of sincerity, Rover. I trust you haven't forgotten our conversation earlier. Choose me. I'll tell you everything you want. Huh. I see. So she made the move before I could, and told you all of it already. Then as the winners, would you be so kind as to tell me how you set me up? You are now under arrest for committing multiple felonies in Huang Long. Do you have anything to say? What do I want to say, huh? While I'd love to tell you another story, I guess that's not what you want to hear. Let's cut to the chase, Madam Magistrate. I'm getting bored already. Very well. You will answer only our questions from now on. Sure, why not? What do you want to know? The Thranodians. They hold the key to our ideal. Together, they will bring us the promised true lament, and we will embrace the new world that is bound to come. Sure, why not? What do you want to know? A sentinel such as Jue can predict and correct future events. It gets in our way of achieving our sublime vision. We merely wanted to topple the set future built on lies and take control of our own destiny. Sure, why not? What do you want to know? Our goal has always been the same. We want you. Want you to join us. Uh, forces battle over you, causing all this strife. And yet you remain unaware of your own worth. Are you really that naive? Or are you just dense? Whatever. Our interest in you is not affected by such trivial matters. Sure, why not? What do you want to know? You kidnapped Jue and revived the Thranodian, accelerating the next lament. This is proof enough that you are the enemy of Jinjo and all humanity. Stop dreaming you can force Rover to join you. 
He is our honored guest, and I will not allow any harm to come his way. <laughs> How confident you sound. As the Thranodian's resurrection approaches, Jinjo is barely holding on. How much longer do you think you can keep up this facade? Thank you for your concern. We have crushed your schemes once, and we can do it again. I have one last question for you. Abducting Jue, stalking Rover, and setting up an ambush in Chicha Village. You couldn't have accomplished that all on your own. Unless... Unless I'm not the only overseer in Jinjo, right? <laughs> I have answered all your questions with full honesty. I don't mind you knowing because it won't make any difference. You can try to stop us with all you have, but it's too late to change the course of history. Now, I have one question for you. You seem convinced we caused the disappearance of Jue. What if I told you there was more to it? About Jue? What else do you know? Come closer and I'll tell you, Madam Magistrate. It's a secret for your ears only. How dare you! Madam Magistrate, I do... No. It can't be. Shocked, aren't you? But there's more. What if I told you your sentinel had made this prophecy a long, long time ago? Your all-seeing sentinel abandons you now of all times. Need I say more? We're merely adding a touch of extra fuel to the fire that will soon consume all. Rover, care for a wager? I know you've been searching for answers about your past, and I've got news for you. Watch out! You are one of us, the Black Lambs, and you have been chosen to join us, ushering in the new world. Once you discover what you really are, you will come to us with no hesitation. The Fraxidus awaits your arrival with open arms. And I look forward to that day in sincere anticipation. <laughs>